Hello there and welcome to another episode of Dr. Cassette's workshop. A while ago I bought this bench power supply at a flea market and it turned out to be a rather strange and certainly not a very well functioning construction on the inside. So this video documents how I improved on that. It's not a how-to video. So this is how it looked on the inside before. And this is a time lapse of me taking the whole thing apart. So first we're going to remove all of this messy wiring. Only two colors in the whole entire unit. Removing the transformer and circuit board was kind of tricky because it was a very tight fit. There goes the styrofoam. And more wiring. And the nice asbestos rheostat. And this is the whole thing all emptied out. I bought the kit for a bench power supply in a big tech store. The advantage of this is it comes complete with a nice printed circuit board. That makes things so much easier. So this is a time lapse of me assembling the whole thing and yes I'm using scissors to cut the excess wires. I don't have a second pair of clippers that I could bring into the apartment and clippers are not exactly cheap if you're buying decent ones. So always read the instructions of course and put the whole thing together for the most part at least. We are now in the workshop and I finished building the power supply kit. Some modifications. I put in a bigger rectifier bridge. Now this thing is a total overkill but I didn't want it to put in what came with the unit which is this dinky little thing. It's right at one and a half amps so theoretically it would be enough but when these things are running at their rated maximum current, they are already getting quite hot. So I'm just more comfortable having this thing in there. Had to drill some bigger holes into the circuit board to uh, make it fit. <laughs> I also installed a second screw. I drilled a second hole through the heatsink and all the way through the circuit board. Uh, and that is going to keep the heatsink from moving around, from rotating. Because if this single little screw through the voltage regulator is not a 100% tight, then this whole thing is going to start moving. I also installed some posts, so I can attach the voltage adjustment potentiometer and the LED externally. So now I'm going to start assembling all of this into the case right there and I'm gonna start by drilling some additional holes because we will be putting in some additional features. And it's quite some time later now and we have some additional holes in the case as you can clearly see and we also have the IEC socket already installed and yes this ended up looking kind of messy but oh well. Making some progress, I now have the primary side completed. There is the transformer. One side of it goes to the power switch, which is right there. And I always like to wire up the power switches so that they turn on when you push them up. So when something accidentally falls onto the switch, it turns it off and not on. The other side of the transformer runs to the fuse, since that is kind of close to the secondary side of the whole thing. I have it nicely insulated in heat shrink tube, so that ought to be safe. And then we have our IEC socket and that is of course grounded to the case right there. The workbench is starting to look increasingly messy, but I now have the faceplate pretty much assembled. Really the only thing that's still missing is the voltage adjustment down there. I covered up the giant hole for the original light bulb with a washer so that I could mount this little LED. I have it all wired up in there as you can see. No electronics yet. But the thing that does work at this point 
is a power LED. Now this is unfortunately quite a bit more dim than I had hoped, but the problem is I have this directly hooked up to a 4 volt winding of the transformer and the 0.7 volt drop across this rectifier diode is already enough. On uh, the original design I had an additional dropping resistor in series, but that was really dim. It is the next day, and as you can see, we have the electronics in place and all wired up. This took quite a while to do, as you can see. Right now, I'm actually debugging this thing. It turns out we have some kind of an intermittent fault in the primary side. I'm thinking it's that fuse holder right there. This does not make good contact. And, of course, <laughs> having the kind of luck that I have, I slipped with my test probe while measuring voltages. <laughs> Look at that. I shorted right across the mains. That blew away half of my probe right there. You can also see it on the jack right there. Well, we are getting somewhere, but unfortunately we are not yet at the end of this journey. All the electronics are in place, it's all wired up. I figured out that this fuse holder is in fact bad, so it's bypassed. And of course this is not going to stay that way. I will have to replace that before I finish this all up. But for the time being, let's take a look at how this all works. So. For this demonstration, I have a load hooked up. It's just a little resistor right there, load resistor. So you flip the power up, get a red indicator light, and you can now adjust your voltage all the way up to 17 volts. If you want to get more than 17 volts, that's what this switch is good for. This changes the secondary of the transformer. You flip the switch and you get the full 25 volts. You could get a lot more than that, but that is limited using the trimmer potentiometer on the circuit board. Now, as you can see, we do have a load connected and we do have a voltage present, but there is no current flowing. That is because I have installed a load switch. You flip the switch up, a green light comes on. This light is uh, powered by the circuit board down there. And as you can see, we can now adjust our voltage and the current changes accordingly. And uh, quite often I have missed having a load switch, so it's nice to have that. And unlike in the original design, we now actually have a very good load regulation. I have it adjusted to around 10 volts and you can see the output current jumps up and down but the output voltage does not change at all. So that is much better than the original design. Now you may say well why is this not the end of this journey? This all seems to work quite nicely. Put on the cover and call it good. Well, unfortunately, it turns out this transformer is an absolute piece of shit. The first problem, well, that I sort of knew before. I knew that it was going to be critical, but I did not think it was going to be that much of a problem, admittedly. Um, I am measuring the voltage that uh, we put into the circuit, the AC voltage coming out of the transformer. As you can see, we are either getting 17 volts in the low position. If I flip our secondary switch, we are getting 34 volts. That is too much. If you put that into the rectifier and into the filter capacitor, you will end up with a whopping 45 volts DC going into the regulator. And the regulator is only rated for 40 volts of input. So, why is this not a problem? Why does this not cause the chip to blow up? Well, that you can only do when there is no load. Once again, this thing is an absolute piece of shit. I want to turn on the load and set it so that we put out one amp. 
across our load. Turn it off again. Take a look at our meter. 34 volts. If I now turn on the load, look at that. 24 volts. It drops. It drops a whole lot. And the problem is it drops way too much for the regulator. So look at the voltmeter as I turn the load on and off. Okay, this actually works, would you believe it? Let me go up to the full 25 volts, turn on the load. As you can see, the voltage, the output voltage of the transformer drops so much that the output voltage from the regulator drops as well. So that is a big problem. It's also apparent in the low voltage mode. If I turn on our um, load, look at that. Normally we're getting 17 volts. With a load, we're getting, well, barely 12 volts. I can turn this all the way up and this is all we get. This is all we get. And if I disconnect the load, as you can see, it jumps up quite a bit. And once again, we can also look at this from the transformer output perspective on this meter. This is with a load off, 17 volts, load on, 14 volts. So this silly thing is not even, even capable of outputting those voltages with one amp of current. And this gets pretty damn warm, and it gets pretty damn warm no matter if there is a load connected or not. So to make this power supply work properly and safely, I'll have to replace a transformer, which is really, really annoying. And at this point, it's not even possible because, uh, well, <laughs> despite me having all of this cupboard filled with transformers, I don't have any transformer that has the right kind of specifications.